So in this problem, we're asked to prove this claim using strong mathematical induction. The problem says use strong mathematical induction. And so the first uh, thing we need to do is understand exactly what the claim is saying. So um, the idea here is that we start with a pile of stones. We don't, it doesn't, we don't need to like actually draw a pile of stones or anything. But the idea is that we have this pile of stones and there are n stones in it. And we systematically split this into smaller piles. And so the idea here is that if we split this into R and S, that both R, so no, there's a couple things going on here. N has to equal R plus S, right? So the split has to be even. We can't lose any stones. And then what we do is we multiply these together at this point, R, R times S. All right, now we systematically continue this process, right? So as long as there's more than one stone in any pile, we split this into smaller piles. All right, let's say, R11 and S11 and R say 12 and S12 and now the idea is that R11 plus S11 has to equal R and the same is true here so R12 plus S12 has to equal S okay and we multiply these together so R11 times S11 R12 times S12 we multiply these together and at the end of all of this we continue this process until we just have a bunch of stones, so you might not be able to see that, a bunch of stones just lying around, right, and, and single, not in piles, but separated entirely, and then we add up all of these, all of these numbers, right, so RS plus R11S11 plus R12S12 plus all the way down, all these products, and the claim is that this will always add up to the same product, or the same sum of products, which is N times N minus 1 over 2, okay? Um, this is what we want to prove, and this is the idea here. So the number one step when before you try to prove something is to understand what the claim is saying. Now, we are again, we're told to use strong induction. So if you're not told to use strong induction, you have to think of that as well. But we're told to use strong induction on this one, so let's do it. The base case here is going to be, we don't have a pile of stones. Um, we can't split a single stone into two in this situation, right? So the smallest number, the base case that we need to check is when S, e sorry, when N equals to two. We have a pile of just two stones. So we're going to start our proof now, okay? Step one of any induction proof is always to prove the base case. And again, for this case, the base case is actually N equal to two. N equal to one is not a pile, okay? A single stone is not considered a pile here. There's only one way to break down a pile of um, two stones into two piles of, you know, smaller numbers of stones. Remember, each pile has to have at least one stone. So the only way to do that is to break it into two piles of one stone each, right? And so that means that in this case, our R is equal to one, and S is also equal to one. Of course, that means that R times S is equal to one, and there's nothing to add up. That's the only thing that we've done, right? So our, our sum of products should just be one. And so there we go. That's it, right? We need to also check then that n times n minus 1 over 2 is equal to this same number. Remember, n is 2. So this is 2 times 2 minus 1 over 2. 2 times 1 over 2, that's 1. All right, and so at this point we've shown that the systematic uh, separation of the pile, which again in this case was just separating the two stones, the product there is 1, right, and the formula gives us 1. And so the base case is verified, right? The base case is verified. Now, the next step in the induction proof process is always to then state your induction hypothesis. So here's our induction hypothesis. In this case, again, we were told to use strong induction, right? And we're going to see exactly why. And part of, part of the reason for using strong induction, that you, the, the indication in the problem that we should use strong induction as opposed to weak induction, is that um, this says that... Uh, use strong induction to prove that no matter how you split the piles, okay? That's the key for the strong induction. Um, we are going to split up this pile. So if, if you have more than two stones in your original pile, there are lots of different ways to start separating into smaller piles, okay? And um, therefore, there's no guarantee that we just take one stone out at a time, in other words. If we take one stone out at a time, systematically like that, then you could use weak induction here. But that's not what we're told to do. We're told to do it in in a way that does not depend on how we divide the stones. So, strong hypothesis. After all that conversation, our strong hypothesis is that is the following, all right? 
So suppose that for some n greater than or equal to 2, then uh, the hypothesis holds. So the form, let's, let's say it this way, the formula holds. I don't want to rewrite the whole formula, but the formula holds, holds, all right, for every integer k uh, between 2 and n, right? So such that uh, 2 is less than or equal to k, less than or equal to n. All right, this is the strong hypothesis because, all right, we chose some n, so that's the sum n, but then the strong part of the hypothesis is that this holds for every integer between 2 and n. And remember, if you use the latter analogy, um, our base case was n equal to 2, right? And what we are assuming is that if we are on the kth step, that we have stepped on every step of the ladder on the way up, right? That's the strong induction hypothesis. The weak hypothesis is you just jump on the ladder at the kth step, you don't care how you got there. As long as you know you're on the ladder, you don't care how you got here. But we do care, okay? For the strong hypothesis, we do care. We've stepped on every step. All right, once we've stated our hypothesis and, and proved our base case, right? The hypothesis always comes after the base case. If you can't prove the base case, do not continue, okay? Figure out how to prove the base case first. Step three is to actually induct, okay? What do we have to do? Well, the induction step is to show that the statement is true for, uh, so show that the formula holds, right, for n plus 1. So we know that it's true for n, we need to show that it's true for n plus 1. All right, so let's write down the formula before we try to do the proof. So the formula says that no matter how we split this pile of n plus 1 stones systematically into smaller and smaller piles of just one stone eventually, that the formula says that the, the sum of these products should always be n plus 1 times n plus 1 minus 1 all over 2. And that's, of course, just n plus 1 times n over 2. All right. I cannot use this right right now. This is my goal. I want to show that this statement is true, right? That the that the sum that we're talking about is equal to this. So here's what I have to do. I've did that, I just wrote that down so that I know where I'm headed, right? That's my goal. So here's the proof. Um, let's suppose we split our pile. So split the pile of n plus one stones into two piles right, into two piles uh, of R and S stones respectively. Okay, um, here R and S are both bigger than zero, so there's at least one stone in each pile, and of course the sum R plus S has to be equal to N plus one. All right, so we haven't lost any stones. We didn't throw any stones away, and our piles are non-empty. We have at least one stone in each pile. Now, because of this fact, right, then each, if, if each pile has to have at least one stone, then we can say for sure that both R and S are, um, are less than or equal to N. All right? Now, R and S are not necessarily greater than or equal to 2, but if there's just one stone, then we consider that as just a one. We don't have to, uh, we have to obviously add that in, right? But we don't have to multiply it by anything. But these are both less than or equal to n. So in this case, the hypothesis applies. So our hypothesis applies here. And if we continue our process from here on, so at this point we've taken our n plus one and we've divided it into a pile of R and a pile of S, right? If we continue on from here, supposing we have to continue on from here, then if we continue on, um, these two uh, sums obey our hypothesis, right? So our hypothesis applies. Our hypothesis applies. And therefore, what's the sum? Well, it's going to be the sum of these two, right? So it's going to be R times R minus 1 over 2 plus uh, s times s minus 1 over 2. That's the sums of each of these, right? So let me color code this. This red one is the sums of the dots. 
this blue one is the sum of these dots, right? But we cannot forget red and blue make purple. This is not purple, but we have to multiply these together too, right? So plus R times S. We have to add these up. All right, so by our induction hypothesis, this is what our sum is equal to. Now let's go back and try to imagine what this sum right here would look like in this scenario, okay? So if this is true. So let's let's just try to, to compare. So if, if indeed, the sum is equal to n plus 1 times n divided by 2, right? then it would have the form in terms of the r and s of the following. Remember, n plus 1, that is r plus s, right? So it would be r plus s times n then is 1 less than this, r plus s minus 1 over 2. And if we multiply this out, look at what we get. We get r squared plus, I'm just going to go through systematically here, so plus rs minus r plus sr plus s squared minus s over 2. And if we kind of group this, r squared minus r, that's factors to be r times r minus 1, right? Um, s squared minus s, that's s times s minus 1. And then look what we have, two of these, right? So plus 2 rs all over 2. And if we break this down, very carefully, what we end up with is that this product here, which by the way, this is n plus 1 times n over 2, right? This is equal to r times r minus 1 over 2 plus s times s minus 1 over 2 plus r times s over 2, or just rs. At this point, we compare. Up here, this is what we got using our hypothesis, right? Using our hypothesis, we got this. Down here, this is what our desired conclusion actually equals. All right, hypothesis, actual, they're the same. All right, so since these are the same, therefore, our conclusion is true, right? So therefore, um, the sum is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2, right? Um, and of course, that finishes the proof because that was that was the job, right? So our job was to prove that when n is equal to, when we go up to it from the nth step to the n plus first step, that we get our formula, we achieve the goal, right? And so therefore, by strong mathematical induction, by strong mathematical induction, the result is true for all n greater than or equal to 2. All right.